I'm very pleased that the administration has put together this commission to evaluate the Common Core. Um, it seems for a while there there was a reluctancy to admit there were significant flaws in, the, in, in it. And um, with regards to you know, the teacher evalu evaluation is an important uh, component. The re reduction of testing is a, is a very important component. Uh, one of the components is the developmentally uh, disabled and making sure that testing and curriculum is, age is, is appropriate for their uh, learning abilities. And so that is, I think, one of the biggest concerns that I have um, as we're proceeding. And I wanted to know, with regards to that, what, what are you looking specifically to, how are you gonna evaluate that uh, and move forward? And secondly, uh, what efforts are being made uh, to engage uh, you know, parents uh, in school communities as we continue in this process? I know you've had uh, nine public hearings, but from now on as you're continuing to work on the changes. Um, well, the last seven months I've spent um, a lot of time, um, 20,000 miles in my car traveling around the state and meeting with various groups. Um, I think that, the, that much of what we need to do is make sure that people understand and are part of this process. And <clears throat> so, so in terms of um, the work that needs to be done, if you look at the surveys, it's very clear that parents learn about what's happening in the schools and what's happening in education from their child's teacher. They trust the teacher, um, otherwise they probably wouldn't have their child with them in the classroom. And so when the teacher speaks, then that's what they believe. Um, and principals are equally important in communications. Um, as our superintendents, they are part of the local community and um, I think it's very important that we, that state ed department get the information out on the changes that have been made that are responsive to the comments and the concerns that people have had. Everyone will not be pleased. Everyone would like it done yesterday. And we're moving in a very appropriate way, I believe, to make the changes necessary. I just want to remind you that some of the concerns that people had was that we moved too fast. And we don't want to repeat those concerns and how we react now to make the changes that need to be made. So um, the work that we're doing now is specifically getting information out through the district superintendents at the BOCES and the big five school districts and um, spreading that out to um, principals and superintendents across the state. We have approximately 700 districts in the state of New York and the communication has to occur at that local level. We're really supporting them to do that. I think that's gonna be a key for us in getting this word and the information out on the changes that are occurring and the timeline that's occurring and why it should be done in a way that allows us to do, to gather and get input as we go. And whether it be through the local school districts or the principals, uh, we have to make sure also that the PTAs and the C uh, community education councils are included. If my office can be helpful in, in my district, please let me know. Um, with regards to heroin curriculum, um, 2014 the legislature passed uh, legislation requiring that opioid and heroin education was um, included in the drug abuse and updated every three years. Can you give us just an update on, uh, on where you're at with that and what progress has been made? Well, we've, we've, we've worked with other state agencies on developing that curriculum and moving that out, but I'll provide that um, update for you when I have more specifics. Okay. Um, I think vocational training is extremely important, and I think when we have this debate oftentimes in Albany about the minimum wage, I think one of the things that we don't often talk about is, um, is trying to get people off minimum wage. And I think that vocational mm -hmm. training offers that uh, career path and I think it's uh, so important that we invest in, in vocational training, and I, I, I like the work that's being done with the pathway. Um, is there adequate access, in your opinion, to vocational training throughout the state? Well, I would agree with you that it's extremely important. Um, it, it is not equal across the state, and so you have some areas that have access to multiple programs for their students, and you have other areas that don't. And, um, and I think we just heard from Brooklyn about some great programs that are very successful there. Um, every place doesn't have those programs. 
And so I think it's, what we have to do is be very purposeful in making sure that um, when we expand and provide resources that it is done across the state. Now the BOCES proposal for CTE, we, in our BOCES, that's one of the core functions that they provide for districts in their area. But I believe that districts also can provide some programming that would be very relevant and connect kids to a career in their community. You're seeing that now. There's been a proposal, and you may be hearing from the superintendent from um, Buffalo, um, Dr. Kreiner Cash, but he has a proposal in to turn some of his high schools that have been persistently struggling into schools that are connected to um, a, an employer in that very area where the school is located and really working those programs so that a student can leave high school and be ready to move immediately into a job with that company. And I think that kind of connection is extremely important. Would you be able to provide my office with some of the uh, best programs you think that are currently underway in the state just to, so I can get an idea of what options there are? Yes. Uh, Thank you. And last question. This is something that's sort of just you know personal to me. I was I was doing a voter registration drive, and um, I had someone who was uh, 18 years old who uh, handed me the registration, and she he uh, had printed where it said signature. And so I said, Oh no, this is not what you're supposed to print. You have to uh, you have to do your signature. He says, I don't I don't have a signature. He's like, I've never learned penmanship in school. We never learned uh, cursive writing in school. I find that to be unbelievable and very disappointing that our young people are graduating not having a signature. I mean, how are they going to, you know, they're going to open a bank account, they're going to sign checks, they're going to um, legal documents throughout the career and life. And I, to not have a signature is not only something I think is, is it's also, it's not, it's not only sad, just in general, as a perspective, but it's, it's something that is, is a, of a security concern, that anyone can just, you know, write, print their name. There's no identity. Um, what are your thoughts on this, and can we change this to make sure that it's part of the curriculum in the state of New York? Well, um, first of all, I think we have to keep in perspective that um, that may, in fact, not have been um, the focus of what the curriculum was in that, in wherever that student went to school and maybe they didn't talk about it, but I, I have been in schools across the state and everywhere I go there is um, writing work up on the walls um, from the students and they're writing the work in cursive. Now that is, it, that is part of a curriculum that's um, much more expansive and um, if we talk about the pedagogy of higher standards, we are including writing as a key component of that. So I would suggest to you that writing is important, and um, I don't, I can't explain how that student will respond the way they did. There are some, there are some um, programs in the past that I have seen across the country that have not, that have left writing, as you know it, out and put more emphasis on using technology for writing and rewriting, et cetera. And if that's the case, then I think we have to make sure that there is a balance across all curriculum areas. Yeah, I would appreciate if you looked further into this, because I had a conversation with teachers um, in my district following, and they just said it's just not required anymore. And so I'm not sure if that's a local decision. I assume it would be a state ed decision, because uh, it's part of the curriculum. But if you, if you could look into that and, sure. and get back to me, I'd appreciate it. We'll do that. Thank you. Thank you.